The Führer spoke first. He said that he considered it his duty to appeal as a victor speaking in the name of reason to the common sense of the people of Great Britain. He had no desire to be the cause of the destruction of a mighty empire. The war in Europe was really of no concern to Britain and she had been drawn into it against her will. Mr. Churchill replied, XPD by Len Dayton, dramatized in eight parts by Michael Bakewell. Episode one, a small killing in Hollywood. The Prime Minister will see you now, Sir Sidney. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Sir Sidney. Good morning, Prime Minister. Do sit down. Thank you. <clears throat> there appears to be no file on this matter. That is correct. So all I have to go on is this newspaper cutting. A major motion picture with a budget of 30 million plus. What was the mystery of Hitler's gold? What is the final secret of the Kaiseroda mine? Well, Sir Sidney, what is the final secret of the Kaiseroda mine? Well, as you will have gathered from my notes, Prime I've Minister... gathered very little from your notes, Sir Sidney. Like most of the communications which originate from the intelligence services, it is designed to conceal more than it reveals. What are these documents you're so concerned about? Prime Minister, there is no prima facie evidence that these documents ever existed. We are dealing with rumors, legends, or perhaps <clears throat> forgeries. After you all... You haven't I... answered my question, Sir Sidney. What exactly were these alleged documents that were stolen from the Kaiseroda mine at the end of the last war? They were... They purported to contain reports of a secret meeting between Churchill and the German leadership in 1940. The German leadership? Adolf Hitler. And these were reports that could seriously affect Sir Winston's reputation? And our conduct towards our allies in the war? Yes, Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. Sir so Sidney, were any of my predecessors in office informed of the existence of these documents? No, Prime Minister, there was no need. But I'm certain there is no truth in the rumours. And if such documents do indeed exist, I'm confident they'll turn out to be like the Hitler diaries. Crude forgeries. Well, that remains to be seen. I'll get one of my people over to California within 24 hours. And you'll be informing US intelligence? Uh, at this stage, Prime Minister, I don't think that would be wise. I quite agree. For the time being, all we need is a straight, simple answer from the film producer. <laughs> that might be rather a difficult task, if my experience of Hollywood film producers is anything to go by. Quite so, Sir Sidney. Quite so. Daddy? Mm -hmm. I want you to do something about Boyd. Oh, uh, anything from the dessert trolley, dear? Well, now, what did you have in mind? He's being so beastly about the divorce. I mean, not all our friends know we're separated. And I have horror of finding him sitting opposite me at a dinner party. I wish you'd send him to do some job on the far side of the world. But Jennifer, I can't After just... All, you were the one who was in such a hurry to get us married. Uh, and he is on the reassignment list. Yes. I can't say he's greatly endeared himself to the permanent staff while he's been on administrative duties. <laughs> well, then. And there is something he could do for us in California. Oh, Daddy. You don't know how wonderful that would be. Not just for me, but for Boyd. You know how much he hates it in the office. Yes, it's quite urgent, too. We'd have to get him away by the weekend at the latest. You are a darling. Boyd knows California. He did an exchange here at the UCLA. He'll love it. Yes, I will have a dessert. Hmm. Uh, waiter. That about right for you, Stuart? Fine, thanks, Sir Sidney. Good, good. Then let's get down to business. 
You say there is no file, sir. That is a matter of deliberate policy. I can't overemphasize how delicate this business is. Yes, sir. Now then, on April the 8th, 1945, elements of the 90th Division of the U.S. Third Army under General Patton were leaving to Germany. When they got to the little town of Merkers in western Thuringia, they sent infantry into the Kaiser Road assault mine. Well, those soldiers searched through some 30 miles of galleries. They found a newly installed steel door, and when they broke through it, they discovered gold. Four-fifths of the Nazi gold reserves were stored there. So were two million or more of the rarest of rare books from the Berlin libraries, the complete Goethe collection from Weimar, 140 rolls of oriental carpets, as well as paintings and prints from galleries and collections all over Europe. Oh, it would, it would take half an hour or more to read out the list of material. I'll let you have a copy. Yes. Thank you, sir. Now, Patton and Eisenhower went to see the treasure on April 12th. Two days later, the army were ordered to move it all to Frankfurt, so they took jeeps and trailers down the mine brought it out. <laughs> Such ingenious people, the Americans, sir. Yes, sir. Anyway, it took about 48 hours of continuous work to load the treasure, and the only way to do it so quickly was simply by listing whatever was on the original German inventory tags. It was a system that had grave shortcomings. If things were stolen, there was no way to be sure that the German inventory had been correct in the first place. Quite so, Stuart. Now, a special team from the State Department were given commissions overnight, put into uniform, and flown from Washington to Frankfurt to search the great stacks of documents that were mixed up with the valuables. They were looking for sensitive papers or secret diplomatic exchanges that would be of value to the US government or embarrassing if they were made public. And there was such secret material. Let me get you another drink, Stuart. Yes, you, uh... You like this malt, don't you? With water this time? Straight, please, sir. Well, of course there was secret material. The exchanges between the German ambassador in London and his masters in Berlin during the 1930s would have caused a few red faces here in Whitehall to say nothing of red faces in the Palace of Westminster. Huh. Enough indiscretions there to have put a few of our politicians behind bars in 1940. Members of Parliament telling German embassy people what a, a splendid fellow Adolf Hitler was. No ice, no soda, nothing in it at all. No, thank you. No, no, with a fine Scots name like Boyd Stewart, a man mustn't be seen watering a Highland malt. Not in front of a Sassanac. Mm. Oh, yes, <laughs> I see. Was it Jennifer's idea? Sending me to California, was that her idea? We wanted someone who knew something about the film trade. You came to mind immediately. You mean... Had it been backgammon on the brigade of guards, I might have been trampled in the rush. I remembered that you'd been on an exchange scheme to Los Angeles. But it was Jennifer's idea. Little thought you'd find yourself in this business when you were at Trinity Estes. To tell you the truth, sir, I was hoping to be a tennis professional. Oh, fascinating. Now, on April 16th, 1945, the convoy of lorries left to drive to Frankfurt. Three, or perhaps four of them, did not arrive. None of the valuables and the secret documents on them were ever recovered. Well, the US Army never officially admitted the loss of the lorries, but unofficially, they said three. And you're worried that this film company in California may now have possession of the documents? I can assure you quite categorically, Stuart, that we are talking about forgeries. We're talking about mythology. But supposing the film company do have documents of some sort, is it something that could embarrass the government? Yes, Stuart, it is. And are we trying to prevent this film company from making a film about the Kaiser Rhoda Mine and its treasures? Ugh, oh, I don't give a tinker's cuss about the film, but I want to know what documentation they have access to. I'm not sure I know exactly what I'm looking for. Oh, you'll know it when you see it. Anyway, we'll keep in contact with you through our controllers in California. Now then, I want you to be there by the weekend. There are a few personal affairs to settle. Hmm? Cancel my holiday arrangements and stop the milk. Milk? We've people in the department who will attend to details, Stuart. We have people in the department who will attend to the details, Stuart. <laughs> so what did you say, darling? <laughs> Not this little gorgeous detail, they won't. <laughs> Some things must remain secret. No, you fool. <laughs> what did you really say? I opened my mouth and poured my ex-father-in-law's whiskey into it. By the time I'd finished it, he's disappeared through the floor like the demon king in the pantomime. Dracula, we call him in the office. I'm going to Los Angeles. Oh, I know all about that. 
Who do you think typed up your orders this afternoon? <laughs> You'll be faithful to me while I'm away. Oh, I'll wash my hair every night and go to bed with Keats and Coco. You'll go to bed early with Boyd Stewart tonight. Come on. <laughs> I made you that roasted eggplant dip you like. You do like it, don't you? There's something more I like. Come to bed. <sighs> I must turn off the oven first, or my chickpea casserole will dry up completely. Your chickpea casserole? We don't want that to dry up, darling. I'll turn down the bed. Kitty? What is it? Kitty, the lock of my desk is broken. What? You didn't break into it, did you? Oh, of course not. <laughs> I'm not interested in your old love letters from your wife. <laughs> it's not funny, Kitty. I've classified material in here. Airline ticket, passport, letter to the bank, contact addresses, photographs. Anything missing? Not as far as I can see. Did you leave the door open when you went down to the dustbin? There was no one on the stairs. Probably someone waiting upstairs. Perhaps the same kid who did the burglaries in the flat on the floor below. Are you going to phone the department? Nothing's missing. If I phone the night duty officer, they'll be all over us. You know what a fuss they'll make. We'll be up all night writing reports. Oh, you know best, sweetheart. Kid, probably. Looking for cash. Who's the man in the newspaper cutting? Uh, a guy named Bernard Lustig. He's the one who's making the film. Oh, he doesn't look like my idea of a film producer. But he must be pretty well healed. If you can afford all expenses paid trips to Hollywood for veterans of the US Third Army who were involved in the Kaiser Road and mine. What's it all in aid of? That's what I'm going to find out. But from what I've heard, some of the veterans of the Kaiser Oda mine are not going to be that eager to crawl out of the woodwork. And this photo must have been taken at the training battalion at Camp Edwards. <laughs> hey, your dad didn't change much over the years, huh? Hey, did, did he cut your Uncle Aram out of this picture? I guess so. Oh. You know, he, he never forgave himself for Aram's death. Look, Mr. McIver, I've really no idea when Dad'll be back. He could be ages. Oh, that's all right, Billy. I don't like going out into the rain anyway. <laughs> and this one here was taken in uh, Mainz, uh, the, the, the night we looted the champagne. <laughs> Just look at your dad. Ah, they broke the mold when they made Charlie Stein. You know, when we were in the army, he ran that damn battalion. And I'll tell you this, I'll bet you the colonel would say the same. Charlie Stein ran the battalion. Everybody knew it. Now, but uh, he's not always easy to get along with, right, Billy? Were you an officer, Mr. McIver? Captain. <laughs> yeah, but just for the last few weeks of my service. Yeah, I finally made it, Captain McIver. I had it painted on the door. Is it true you pitched for Babe Ruth, Mr. McIver? Uh, your dad told you that, did he? That was when you were at Harvard, wasn't it, Mr. McIver? Well... You were never at Harvard, Mr. McIver. I checked it. What do you mean? And I checked your credit rating, too. You don't own any house wait, now, in Palm Springs. Now, wait a minute here. You're a phony, Mr. McIver. Wait. Even the car outside isn't yours. The payments Let... are made in the name of your ex-wife. Uh, well, the money comes from me, Billy. Now, I know what's biting you. It's the money that I got from your dad. Six thousand bucks. Well, I ran into a tough period last fall. Uh, supplies needed replacement and fast, and I couldn't meet the deadlines. Now, look, I'm going to pay it back to him, every red cent. And I mean within the next uh, few weeks or so. Uh, that's what I came to see him about. What happens in six weeks? Well, I'll tell you what happens in six weeks, Billy. I get the money for the movie rights of my war memoirs. Movie rights? Yeah, $25,000. What did you do in the war? What did you do to ever want to make a movie out of it? Well, I was an MP, a military policeman. I was with old blood and guts George Patton's Third Army when they opened up the Kraut salt mine and found the Nazi gold reserves there. I, billions of dollars in gold, Billy, as well as archives, paintings, jewelry. And you'd never believe the stuff that was there. What were you doing? Well, we was guarding it. Well, not just... Not just me, Billy. There were five infantry platoons guarding the trucks that moved up to Frankfurt. Didn't your dad ever tell you about that? And about the trucks that never got to the other end? What are you getting at, Mr. McIver? Now, no, wait, now, don't get me wrong, Billy. Nobody's saying that your dad had anything to do with the hijack. One of dad's relatives in Europe died during the war. He left dad some land and stuff over there. That's how dad made his money. Sure it is, Billy. Now, sure, nobody's saying any different. I don't go much for all that war stuff. Well... Now, this here film producer, Bernard Lustig, with the office out on Melrose, he goes for it. 
and he knows everybody out here, the big movie stars, the directors, the agents, the writers, everybody. Movie business kind of interests me. Well, well, you want to meet Bernie? Could you fix that up for me? No problem. And I get a piece of the action, too. Two percent of the producer's profits. Now, that could be a bundle, Billy. Well, I couldn't handle the technical stuff, and I'm no good with a camera. I can't write with a damn, but I'd make myself useful on the production side. <laughs> that is, if you'll have me. <laughs> if he'll have you? <laughs> the son of my best buddy? Well, well, he'll he'll have you in that there production office, Billy, or I'll just I'll just pull out and take my story somewhere else. Well, gee, thanks, Mr. McCarter. Yeah, well, well, I gotta go, Billy. There, there's a few calls that I gotta make. I was it was nice talking to you. Give give my respects to your dad, huh? And and tell him that he'll be hearing from me real soon. Meantime, I'll talk to Bernie and and uh, and have him call you up and fix up a lunch, okay? Thanks, Mr. McIver. No, forget it, kid. Oh, what? <clears throat> well, McIver, did you fix it? Stein wasn't there. I, uh, I spoke with his son, and uh, he doesn't know a thing. You didn't mention the Kaiser owed a mind business to the boy, I hope. I, I'm not that kind of a fool, Mr. Kleiber. You said don't mention it to anybody uh, except the old man. Look, I know how to keep my mouth shut. Hi, Dad. I didn't think I'd find you here, Billy. I thought you had every day. I thought I'd stay home and watch a video. See the way they fix the shots. I give it a rest, will you, Billy? I'm tired. Your friend McIver dropped in. He thinks he can get me a job in the movies. McIver was here? What's wrong? When was McIver here? I didn't phone you. You said never interrupt your Wednesday night poker game. When? Well, five o'clock, maybe six. Did you see TV tonight? No, I told you. I've been running a video. What is it? McIver's dead. Dead? It was on Channel 2, the news. Some kid blew off the top of his head with a sawed-off shotgun and left the weapon there. It happened in one of those little bars on Western Avenue near Beverly Boulevard. A street gang, was it? Who then threw away a $200 shotgun, all carefully sawed off so it fits under your jacket? Then who? Who knows? MacGyver the Mouth, they called him. Owes money all over town. Could be some creditor blew him away. Well, he sold his war memoirs. What? Well, some movie producer. Story about Nazi gold in Germany in the war. So that's it. I wondered why the bastard had been going around talking about all the guys from the outfit. He's been getting a story from you? From me, he got nothing. MacIver has been writing all this down, has he, and passing it on to some movie guy. Bernie Lustig. MacIver was going to introduce me to him. Eh, he won't be doing much in the night of introductions, Billy. And uh, uh, this guy, Lustig, where does he have his office? Uh, up on Melrose. He hasn't made it to Beverly Hills, even to Sunset. That's what made me think it was true. If McIver had been inventing this guy, he would have picked somewhere flashier than Melrose. Uh-huh. I can go to the top of the class, Billy. What are you going to do now, Dad? Um, I lost 530 bucks tonight, Billy. I've put away uh, a little more white wine than is good for my digestion. Are you going to find this Bernie Lustig character? Is that the name of the movie producer? I just told you, Dad, on Melrose. Yeah, I guess so. You don't think this Lustig guy had anything to do with the killing, do you? I'm going to bed now, Billy. If Lustig owed McIver $25,000... I will talk about it in the morning, Billy. It's time for bed. I'll catch you TV news. Think they'll still be running a clip of the killing? Uh, it's a tough town, son. One killing don't make the news for long. Breslow, Max Breslow. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mrs. Stein. What can I do for you? Oh, do sit down. I was expecting to meet Mr. Bernie Lustig. Oh, Mr. Lustig is in Europe right now, Mr. Stein. There's work to do there for our next production. The final secret of the Kaiser Oda mine. Uh, uh, Mr. Miles McIver is an old friend of mine, Mr. Breslow. Uh, he promised to get my son a job in your film. McIver was a close friend of mine. You were in the army with him? I, I didn't say that. It was a sad business with McIver. Yes, it was. Sad business. 
Would you like a drink, Mr. Stein? Okay. Yeah. Uh, rum and coke, if you got it. Ice? Damn hot in here. Is the air conditioning working? Here's your drink. Thanks. Yes, damn hot. Yesterday's rain got into the mechanism. <laughs> MacGyver owed me money, a lot of money. He gave me part of his interest in your movie as surety. I hope you took the precaution of having him put that in writing. Right. Well, we're not even in pre-production stage at present. It's possible that still we will decide not to make the film. Unless we make it, there will be no money. All MacIver's war experiences, was it? Well, together with some anecdotes he gathered from his comrades, some guesses about what went on in high places, and some creative writing concerning MacIver's intrepid contribution to the Allied victory. Uh -huh. <laughs> the movie-going public is always interested in such stories. Little gang of rear echelon soldiers stealing everything they could lay their hands on. Crooks in uniform. It's an amusing formula. <laughs> Look here, Breslau. Don't you ever act disrespectful to me or to MacIver or to any of our friends, huh? We don't let strangers discuss what we did back there in 1945. We left a lot of good buddies out there in the sand and the shit and the awful. I buried a kid brother Aram out in that battlefield and we stumbled on a little good fortune. That's the way it goes. The spoils of war. We were entitled, and you remember that from now on. I'm sorry to have offended you. I understood you to say that you were not one of Mr. McIver's comrades. The spoils of war. That's all it was. No offense intended. You can call it anything you want. It's quite all right with me. Were you in the war, Mr. Breslow? I was too young. I spent my war years in Canada, working for my father. Breslau. That comes from Breslau, the German town, right? Were, were your folks German? Well, what do I know about towns in Germany? I'm a U.S. citizen. I live here in California. I pay my taxes and stand to attention when they play the Star Spangled Banner. What do I have to do? Change my name to Washington, D.C.? <laughs> That's a good joke. <laughs> You'll get your money, Mr. Stein. Providing, of course, that you furnish the necessary agreement signed by Mr. McIver. We'll not wait for probate, if that's what's worrying you. There's a lot of money available to buy the documents Mr. McIver spoke of. What documents? The secret documents about Hitler. Surely you've heard of them. I might have heard rumors. Well, there's a great deal of money. And the job for my son. Well, he has no experience in movie-making and, of course, no labor union membership. Still, it might be possible to make a place for him, especially if he's inherited his father's forcefulness. <laughs> I'll get my secretary to fix an appointment for me to meet your son. Well, unless you have any questions, Mr. Stein. <laughs> Just one question, Mr. Breslow. Why are you carrying a gun? Me? Don't get around with me, Breslow. It's in the holster on your belt. I saw it just now. Oh. <laughs> oh, the tiny pistol. Yeah, the tiny pistol. Now, what's a nice, respectable movie producer like you doing with a Saturday night special in your waistband? Well, sometimes I carry a lot of cash. Uh, I knew there had to be a good reason. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Breslow. There's a lot of money available to buy the documents Mr. McIver spoke of. What documents? The secret documents about Hitler. Surely you've heard of them. I might have heard rumors. Oh, that's enough. That's a great deal. Uh, what do you think? You did all right, Max. Uh, what'll happen next, Willie? We've got rid of Lustig. What? You've let Stein know we can pay a lot of money for the documents, and soon he will discover that he's lost a great deal of money. If he's not to go under, he will have to come back to us. Uh, how did you manage to fix... Stein's bank. Not me, Max, the trust. When you have the active assistance of some of the most successful bankers in Germany, such swindles are easy to arrange. Now, what did you mean, <coughs> we've got rid of Lustig? You said you'd given him money for a vacation in Europe. You leave that side of things to me, Max. Don't give Bernard Lustig another thought. The less you know about him, the better. And, and what about MacIver? <coughs> Who killed him? 
They have a word for it in British intelligence. XPD. Expedient demise. Oh, I wish I'd never got into this. The Trust needs you. Operation Siegfried needs you. You were a Nazi, Max. Don't forget it. That was a lifetime away, Willy. But it was your lifetime, Max. You were a Nazi. And don't count on anyone forgetting it. In XPD by Len Dayton, Boyd Stewart was played by Trevor Nichols, Sidney Ryden, David Garth, Charles Stein, Bruce Boer, Max Breslow, Bernard Hepton, Willy Kleiber, Clifford Rose, Hitler Minutes, Colin Starkey, Prime Minister, Bernard Brown, Jennifer, Jenny Funnell, Kitty, Melinda Walker, MacIver, Don Fellows, Billy Stein, Ian Tyler. XPD is dramatised by Michael Bakewell, by Michael Bakewell,